Thanks for tuning in. All right, today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, motor replacement on these little toy quads. I've got one here that whenever you try to lift, it always tries to pick up this way. So obviously this motor is going bad. Sometimes this one just won't even spin up at all. Um, sometimes you can uh, flick it and get it going and you can get some flight out of it. But uh, at this point I've grown tired of it, so I'm going to actually replace it. I'm going to show you that. Um, I've done most of the screw work off camera um, so let's just dive right in well that doesn't want to come off now got the camera fairly close in because this is some pretty small soldering we're going to be doing so there we go if you haven't seen the insides Take a look. Kind of overwhelming because everything is so small. Um, something I should cover is the, the the two frame pieces, when you screw them together, they really give this a lot of rigidity. Because right now, this thing is really flexible. But when you've got it all buttoned down with the screws, it's actually quite rigid. Um, and the flexibility gives it a, a, the ability to take some impact. Um, and then the screws with the two pieces give it the rigidity. So, I mean, this is really, really thin, flexible plastic. It's, um, it's amazing that with just this plastic, it can hold the arms rigid and we can fly these things around. Okay, so we'll set this aside and let's do it over here. So, we remember this is our motor. So, these just pull right out. You don't have to unscrew the motors. They're not locked down into a motor pod. We have some annoying masking tape. Why a masking tape? I don't know. Um, there's really no purpose in having any tape. If they wanted to provide us some protection, they could just put some hot glue over the uh, uh, points where the motors are soldered down. But they didn't do that either. Probably because masking tape is cheap and easy to handle. Or at least easy to put on. So we've got four leads coming out of here. Two are for the LEDs, two are for the motors that off my finger and that's what we're getting ready to sort out right now okay so now we have it revealed so our LEDs are the front two and our motor is the back two now we've got white and we've got black so we either need to take a picture or we need to remember which solder point goes to which wire and we need to make sure that we have a motor that matches maybe we don't I just noticed something. Why was that all the way down there? Okay. So, white, black. If I needed to, I would use this video for reference. I have a set of motors here for this model. Let's get the black and white wired motor out, which means it's counterclockwise in this case. Doesn't always, depends on the maker. And generally speaking, if you order the motors that say they're for that model of quad, they'll come with the right colors. Now I have, um, when I had a warranty issue, I have had um, motors come with different wires and then had to do a bit of guesswork. Okay, so white, black, Two solder points. I'm gonna try this do this so you can see it. All I do is just grab the wires, give them a little tug. You can see that solder on there is not great. Also need to take the motor gear off. We're gonna need that. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on now. Kind of do a quick inspection to make sure it's not damaged. Sometimes the motors will come with pinions or gears. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes it doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason for that. I'm going to put a touch of solder on these points. Sometimes you'll hear people refer to it as tinning. All I've done there is I kind of put a little on the end. Just kind of rub it. You just want to be careful. 
not to get it uh, on any other joints. Okay, so now we're going to go for our motors. White was in the front. Having a hard time seeing around this camera now. <laughs> Sticking to my soldering iron and not the solder. Let's go from this angle here. There we go. Turns out it was the edge of the quad that was pushing my wire up and away. Okay. Let it dry for just a moment. Do the pull test. Alright, that's good. Pull this pinion down to the end. We can always adjust it up. Now, I have no plans on putting these wires back in masking tape or really any tape of any sort. I don't. I, I guess it can make things a bit tidy for you when you, if you're getting in and out, but hopefully you're not getting in and out of these a whole lot. Otherwise, you're crashing a lot. Um, and hopefully your skills are getting beyond that. So now we just kind of adjust the wires here to tuck them away so we can get the two pieces, the top, back on. Now the, the motor pods on these slide down over the top. So we've got our uh, stem for our gear comes through here and then the motor goes in this little casing and that keeps it down. So we want to make sure typically on these I put the wires to the outside and then down and that does a fairly decent job for us. Okay, let's see if we can get this lined up and get it back on here. I'm just going to put a couple of screws in here so that my case does not fly apart. Now let's let's do the motor pods actually. These are relatively simple. I kind of like this design. The old king I think started this with uh, we typically see the open gears on the bottom uh, on these quads and then of course if you go down in grass, which if you're, you know, a lot of people will fly in their backyard or something, you go down over grass, next thing you know you got grass or something stuck up in your um, gears. Maybe you find it and get it out, maybe you don't look, who knows, but I think this design helps keep a little bit of that uh, interference or stuff from the ground from getting in there. Okay, two more of these. I know this is riveting video going as quickly as we can. And then if I've done it all wrong, I'll have to fix it off camera. <laughs> but maybe I'll include it just so we can see what happens when you don't have success the first time. Okay, there's our quad. We know the top of the blades go in. High side. That's not good. I can tell already that's not good. I bet you the gear's off. See, here we go. We get to learn something. Oh, yeah. I think yours way off. Oh shoot. Now I've gone too far the other way, haven't I? Let's see if we can fix that without.
Now the flexibility of these arms helped us out here, didn't they? Because they didn't have to take everything apart again. Just want to move it down a tiny bit. There we go, it should be good. Gives this some, you know. Okay. Sometimes these uh, gear covers can actually cause some friction. Like right now with mine. Well, shoot. This is end up going to be longer than I had planned, isn't it? Cover more than just simple soldering and two wires here. Let's make sure it turns freely. Okay. I think we're good. Sorry, a lot of that was probably out of frame, but I was just trying to get everything adjusted. I'm going to go ahead and give these props just a couple of turns down. So they don't go flying away and break everything. But we're going to give it a little test here real quick just to make sure before we put those 12 other screws in. Now mine doesn't have legs on it but for testing purposes that's going to be just fine. So, got flashing lights. This is a Devo, this is in stock. Should be binding right to this. Okay, it says it's bound. And we got movement. Let me bring this up, hopefully you can see it. Okay. I think we had a functioning motor that we replaced that with and it's all in and set. What we would have to do from this point is take the rest of our screws, put them back in, put the legs on, which I modified my legs. Sorry, I had more right across there. My legs are chopped off. I didn't like how the legs on landing would just make it kind of bounce and fall over. So now I'll go ahead and put those screws in, and there we go. We've replaced the motor. We got to see the insides of our quad. Um, another project that I have planned for this guy is to add a 3-gram um, FPV camera. You can buy them off of Banggood. Um, I might attempt that yet here after I get done with this. Okay, so there you go. In a nutshell, replacing a motor in your toy grade quadcopter in this case it's the mold king a super s or the 33041 um, if you find you have a quad that you really like to fly a lot i suggest going ahead and ordering at least a set of spare motors these motors don't last forever if you take an impact upside down if you land like this you'll do some damage nine times out of ten the, the stems on these props are supposed to be long enough to where they would protect the motors from doing much damage to themselves if landing like that but my experience is, if you land upside down, you're likely to have some sort of motor damage. Okay, if there's something else you'd like to see on repair, let me know. Um, hopefully I've got one that's broken in that way, and then I can show it on video and, and help anyone out. Alright, thanks for watching.